Amun, where in Abay Salun Amun. The last few parshas, Baruch Hashem the Eibshto, was Maramis to us time and time again, different in Yonin of how we can be Mechazek ourselves. And a little bit, you know, they say, uh, no offense to Rav Naftali, or he's Chassidish Einikul, so it's no offense to him either, and there's no one else Litvish in here. But they say, I uh, have a joke about Nachnu and Chabatska and the Litvak were in Gehenna. And um, the Nachman, he sees his, uh, his Rebbe going past and he screams, Rebbe, Rebbe, Rebbe! I grew my pious. Ah, you grew your pious. Fine, you slept him out of Gehenna in his pious. And Chabatsky sees his Rebbe. To the Rebbe, Rebbe, everything, it was just Shlichus. Ah! Oh, shlichus. Told him out of Gehenna. The Litvak, he sees his Rosh Hashiva going past. He says, Rebbe, Rebbe, Rebbe! I warned you! I warned you! Elul! There's a Pilchus Koritza. Sorry, the Kotzka. The people that wake up once a year just for that month, for those 40 days. And they go back to sleep right after Simcha's Torah. It's something that we have to boost. I'll avoid the whole year round. The, the, the Bled Lopian, when he starts in the Mareches Atshuva, in the back of Chelek Gimel, you can look it up. He brings down this week's Sedra as a chorus of and if we look in the Pasha, you have a few types of people that are not allowed into the Kadisra. Nebuch, we start with the Mamza. He's not allowed in. Never ever. Then you get Amoy Namoya. Loyobe Amoy Amoy Ni Amoy Avi the Kalashen. Gamba and see Loyobe Lehem the Kalashen. Ad Oyom. Never. Why? You know what they did? Abysmal, horrific. They didn't bring you water and bread when you actually didn't need it anyways, because you had the air and you had the ma. And also because they hired Bilom to curse you. But don't worry, said the possum, that didn't work out either. But for those reasons, they're never ever allowed to come into Amashem. On the other hand, there's a side of David Kyochichu, there's a side of Mitzri, Kigari, it's about outside. Tosh Lishi. Water and bread, never ever. Come into my nation. You can never be my child. Mitzri, 210 years. They made us do the women's work. Guys, 210 years, we had to cook. We had to wash, we had to clean. Hashem Yishma, how did we survive? Three generations. That's it. Where's the balance? So seven years ago, I said the Gavadi Yavot over here, for those who don't remember, shame on you. Remember it? Remember something. I'm not saying it again. <laughs> the Blade Lopian brings the Ramban. If you look at the Ramban, it's a big, big Arichas, but in the middle of the Arichas, the Ramban says, there's a very, very, very simple Makud over here which Amun and Moya didn't have. It's not what they did, it's what they don't have. It's not what they did, it's what they don't have. They didn't come with water and with bread. Says the Rambam, you know who you're talking to over here? This is the children of your great-great-uncle, Avram. He took care of your great-grandfather, Lloyd. Where is your Hakura Satoyf? They didn't have Hakura Satoyf. And he says it in a sharp way. The Ramban and the Bnei Lopian even sharper. If you don't have Hakoros Atoyf, you're missing what it takes to be a Yid. You're missing what it takes to be a Yid. It's the first ingredient. And Hakoros Atoyf doesn't only mean if I saved your life. Obviously the degrees of Hakoros Atoyf vary according to the favor I've done. But if you deny that you owe somebody Hakoros Atoyf, if you cannot give somebody in a bechavadik away a shkoyach for a favor he's done to you, you are missing something 
in the genetic makeup of what it means to be a yid. This is Elo. Elo means they had a gay, he came to the Shama and he came to the Silo, and he said, I want to join the nation. I want to become a yid. And the same thing with us when we say, I want to become a better version of myself. So I would go to the Shama and I would say, please, Rebbe, teach me in Elo how to learn the whole toy on one foot, and he'd throw me out. And I'd go to the Silo and I'd say to him, Rebbe, please teach me how in a month in Elo I can better myself to be a better yid. And he'd say to me, When you don't like, don't do to your friends. So Ben Adam Lechaviri is a key over here. And normally I wouldn't say it so sharp, but seeing as Moshe Kabrina, he says it as sharp on something else. On Bonim Atem Hashem, in last week's parasha, it is going to be Bonim Atem Hashem and Ekechem, two weeks ago. He says, if a yid can be over the worst of Averis, but he cannot find it within himself to stand before the Rebbe Nishlem and daven and plead like a son, he is an apikoyus. He's a pusher, he's not a mamin. He's not a mamin that this is my father and I can come to him in any matzah, in any situation, in any place where I am, I can always come to him and I can tell him, my father, that I want to pour my heart out to you. The same thing is, if you know you did something wrong to somebody, which Chazal say, if you didn't correct it, and you didn't ask him mechila, then Yom Kippur is not mechapeh, then in the Lashon of Ramosh Kabina, you're an apikoyus. You're going into Yom Kippur not believing, not believing that what Chazal is saying is true. And you're taking the risk Knowing you did something to somebody, not asking the khidah, and you think that the revolution is just going to overlook it. We make a mistake sometimes, and we think we're good people. And it's not a mistake. We are. And if you look at two weeks ago, the big Miller, he starts his Chodesh Elo, his paper, it was a four week program. He started off by saying that when we learned, Moshe Rabbeinu told us the words, He was talking to the Dordea. He was talking to the single time, to the, to the nation at the highest peak of their Ruchni's Dika level where they were ever going to be. And them as well, he told, The Mitzvah of Tshuva. The Mitzvah of Tshuva applies to everybody. From the Bcham Kenevsky to myself. The whole range. Everybody in between has to do some level of tshuva. Abraham Kanievsky, the today's God Lador, whoever it is, the biggest tzaddik, the biggest rabbi, everybody has a level of tshuva. So if you're starting at all thinking I'm a Russia, I'm no good, you're making a mistake. This is what the Pasuk said, the Oyo Ekev Tishmon, the mitzvahs which people are doshba cave of, they step on. These are mitzvahs, and one of them is self respect. You don't have to step on yourself, Baruch Hashem, there's enough people who are doing it for you. There's enough people who are not giving you the respect you deserve, and there's enough people who are trying to lift themselves up by pushing you down. As the fire maxman says, there aren't any real Balegaiva today, or most people are not really Balegaiva. There's just broken people and more broken people. If a person has to push other people down to raise himself up, not, as, not only is he not there, he's convinced he's not there, and his only satisfaction is but he has to push somebody else down. There's three points that make us into Yidin, besides the course of Toiv. We know the Gemara says that Yidin are Achmonim, Gomli Chasodim, and Baishonim. These are three Simonim. And Shlomo Volba says that when you look at what they are, you can be see that somebody can be doing something and getting it, be getting it so completely wrong. Baishonus is, Rachmanus is a, an inclination, a want, a desire to be close to people and to have a real connection with another person. Ach, Zor, doesn't mean a sadist, it's the opposite of Rachmanus. Rachmanus means to have, uh, to empathize with somebody else, to feel, to sympathize and empathize with somebody else, to feel their situation, to go into where they're holding. 
Achzor is the complete opposite of that. No interest and no understanding for another person. Bashonus is an interest to hide oneself, to lower oneself, and to not give out one's beautiful nature in front of everybody, that everybody should say, wow, this is Bashonus. And then you have the Goyim al Chasodim, and that's an interest to always give. And the opposite is somebody who just wants to take. He goes through all of them, but just to bring out the example of how wrong an action could be, even in the face of it, we think that the person is doing a tremendous thing. Let's take the Minas Chasadim. He says, this is his words, somebody who is mitivoy, a giver, he can be a goyim chesed. Chazal say, Ahavas chesed, to love doing chesed, to love helping the other person, that is Gemilis Chasadim. However, there are also Tamidim of Bilam, which you cannot expect for them ever a Maisa Chesed. You can maybe expect for them an outward appearance of kindness, but a real Maisa Chesed it is not. Because the only thing they're interested is about themselves to display perhaps their outward kindness to other people, to show something that they're really not. And really all their interest is everything for themselves. And if he does do a chesed, he's waiting for everybody to pat him on the back and say, wow, you're amazing, you're unbelievable, this is great. And this is a person who is only taking for himself. The action which he did was only a way that he could take more glory and more respect for himself. But actually, it does not go down in the books as a Maisa Chesed. Chazmish brings down also, you can have an Askin. If the Askin is just keeping himself busy, Chaznish says that's not Oisik B'Tzorche Yitzvah B'Emunah. If you want to keep yourself busy because you're that type of person and you choose, you know what, and let me keep myself busy by doing things for other people, that is Oisik B'Tzorche Yitzvah B'Emunah. But if you're doing it just because I need to be busy, yeah, or this is his nature, he needs to be in charge of things, it's a shame because you're wasting your energy. Sometimes the Gemara in Gittin brings down terrible story of a person who did nothing. He was absolutely innocent. And the Gemara and Dafnun Ches Ahmed Aleph says, because of him, this story, the Khurban was sealed. Dafnun Ches Ahmed Aleph, you can all look it up, a story of an apprentice. A person took in an apprentice, he takes him in, he wants to teach him the trade, he wants to be kind to him, and he takes him in. This apprentice happened to, happens to like his carpenter, his masters. The person who's giving him work, he happens to like maybe his position, maybe his wife, whatever it is, he starts scheming. And the story goes that the master of Adam, he was a carpenter's apprentice. And one day, as it happens, his balabas needed a little bit of extra cash. So he told him, listen, I have savings. Why don't you send your wife over to my house? And I'll give you the savings. I'll give it to her. I'll lend it to her. Why you have to go through her? Obviously, there's a lot of refreshment in this tomorrow. I'll give it to her, and then I'll lend you the money. He went to his house. The Balabas sent his wife there. And he kept his wife for three days in his house. He was, didn't commit any abeyers. After three days, he says to the, the, the fellow assistant, do you, see, do you know where my wife is? He says, yeah, I heard that she was um, involved with some young ones in the neighborhood. Says, Terrible, what should they do? He says, ah, I think that maybe, you know, a wife like that doesn't deserve to be kept here. He said, yeah, but Aksuba is it's a huge amount. So don't worry, I'll give you the money. How am I going to pay you back? He said, eh, instead of me working for you, you'll work for me. Says the Gemara, what happened was at the end of the day, he married his former boss's wife, and as he sat at the table enjoying his supper, and his former boss watched how his apprentice didn't do anything wrong, but took away his life from him, and two drops, two tears dropped from this person's face. Says the Gemara, because of that, Nechtam, the Gezerah for the Chubbana Dais. 
Sometimes we do things and we have cheshboinus. We have to remember when we stand before the Rebbein Shulayim and we say, Maise enosh v'tach b'loysof. The Rebbein Shulayim knows everybody's real intention. Now it doesn't mean that we're going to have to suddenly turn around because we can't necessarily turn around and become tzaddikim overnight. But when we do something, let us be aware of the shortcomings of the real intentions of why we're doing it and try to make sure that they really are the Shom Shomai. But Edson, I'm sure, everybody here stands before the Rebbein Shleilam, maybe in Elon already, maybe in Slichas, or maybe in, in um, Rosh Hashanah. And we say to the Rebbein Shleilam, the Rebbein Shleilam, Tov Shem Pei Gimel, that's the Gematria, this is going to be my best year ever. This is going to be my best year ever. And it comes to, you know, the beginning of Tav Shem Pei Gimel, and he really means it. But then he thinks to himself, one second, didn't I say the same thing in Tav Shem Pei Beis, and Tav Shem Pei Ayin, and Pei, and Ayin Tes, and Ayin Ches, and since I can remember, about <coughs> Nun, something like that, I've been saying the same thing. So how do we have the Chutzpah, the others, to stand in front of the Rebbein Shlodim and ask him for all the things, the Bakashas, the, all the requests that we ask the Rebbein Shlodim when we're giving empty, false promises. We're telling the Rebbein Shlodim, Rebbein Shlodim, please, next year, please. Gizur panos sanach ha-shidduchim for all of Kali Soch. Please, we'll be better. Really? Yeah, fine. I remember you said the same thing last year. So maybe you did. But here, at the end of the day, yeah, did you make that much of a difference? And the answer most of the time is no. Yeah, something really huge has to happen for us to, to, to make such a, a, a tremendous change in our lives. So the Shem Yishmuel gives us not only hope, but Mamish Yeshua. Last week's Pasha, the Koina Mashiach Lenochama, he went out and he says, Haskes Ushema. He tells them, listen here, and he starts his drasha of all those, if you're just, you're starting now a, um, you're starting a marriage, stay home, you built a house, stay home, you built a vineyard, stay home, you're scared, stay home. And he says, well, if you karob chelem and chomo, ba'oma aleim shema yisro. So the Elgir Ashi, afilo in b'chem z'chus elo kriyas shema b'lvad, k'day atem shu yeshia eschem. Even if you, Klan Yisrael, are now going out to war, you might very well end, you might very well find yourselves at the end of a sharp blade. What is the schus that's going to save you? That's the schus of Kriyashma. And the Shem Yishmol asks a very obvious question. What is so special about Kriyashma that that's the schus that's going to save us from the Nuchama? And the answer is as follows. Let us take a look at the essence of Kriyashma. Kriyashma is Kabbalah Samach HaShumayim. In very, very brief and basic terms, Kabbalah Sohom al Khoshimayim means the Rebbein Shalom Yom Elech Malcham Lochim, you're the king of all. Your word is the law. The Torah is your word. And I am going to adhere to the letter of the law. I'm going to keep as much as I can of the Torah as often as I can. Now, how many times in one life do you have to declare that this is the king and you're going to keep everything that he's saying? Once should be enough. You want to do it once a year to renew your vows? Okay, try it at home as well. Might be a good idea. Once a year, Rosh Hashanah, you mamlech kuchavrichu again on yourself, on the world. Why isn't it enough? We have to do it once a day. We have to do it twice a day. And the Shem Yishmuel says, this is the Tevar we need. The Yid that comes by night, he says, Kriya Shema. He says, Kriya Shema, Mekabal on himself, Amach Hashemayim. He wakes up the next morning and he makes a cheshma nefesh. How was the night? Was it the night? Did the night look really the way a night of a yid should look? Mm, maybe a bit shvach. So in the morning again, he's makabal on himself. Now, I'm going to try harder. It comes again in the evening. Kirishma Lamitta makes a cheshma nefesh. Since the last time I was makabal on myself. Did I really do that much better? And he says, you know what the show them? No, I didn't. But I'm going to be covenant on myself again. And again. And again. And again. And the Yid does not give up. The Yid never gives up. And the not giving up 
They continue. Sheva Yipel Tzadik Vakom. So I said this vod, and I saw it just recently that it's one of the Rishonim say that, that this vod. Sheva Yipel Tzadik. Why is he called a Tzadik? He fell seven times. It's an exaggeration. Who makes the same mistake seven times? He's a Tzadik because Vakom. If you can stand up, you're a Tzadik. If you can stand up and be misnagged to the Yetzirah who's pushing you down, and he pushed you down and you have to get up, and you say, I don't care if you push me down into the ring, I'm not going to let you keep me down, and you get up again and again, you're a tzaddik. And that's what Rashi says. The schus of Shema, the schus of being the Kavan again and again and again, never giving up, that's the schus, which is going to save us from Muhammad. And the Shem Shmuel says now, in the times of Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, this is the same schos. And you say, Rabbi, I know last year wasn't the perfect year, but I'm not giving up. I'm going to try again. And since this was actually supposed to be a Siyam of Abi, right, and his Dechavusa Yechil, I think this is something that, me personally, I get more like Yechizuk from Abi, because Abi never gives up. Right? As hard as he gets... <laughs> God is yet, and as many different chaburus uh, of Tafayoni, uh, he's uh, <coughs> left me hanging over there. Thank you, Ami. Appreciate it. But he never gives up. And he'll try again and again and again and again. And this is a schus for him. For another year, he'll meet Hashem. His hymn is in the height. And when we learn from Ami and we don't give up either, it's a shem, it's a schus for us. We should be zoich to exceed the chsim of And I give him a shkur. Oh yeah.